Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about rate and material analysis for foam work. As you know in the previous episode, we have finished the measurement in quantity for slab, column, beam shuttering. And today we need to know the cost and the required material. As you can see, I have already entered the rate here, 316, 180. How exactly I got this number? And by entering the 316 here, I can see the total required amount. But to get this number, we have to then a calculation, all in rate calculation. And for that purpose, I have prepared this sheet. You can see here, we have considered the required material, required labor, and the tools and machinery, plus the cost accordingly. And which material do we need? Is it a wood, steel, aluminium? how much material, their quantity, we have to consider all. So if you are really interested to learn the rate and material analysis, this video is especially for you. We're gonna learn the thought process, the calculation behind, so it will give you the complete idea. So without any delay, let's get started. Before we proceed any further in rate and material analysis, if you haven't watched the previous video where I have shown how to measure the quantities for the foam work, I will suggest you to watch that video because that video will help you more to understand this rate analysis, okay? And when we talk about foam work, what exactly we need? In the foam work, we need the square meter and even some cases meter as well. But square meter basically, that's our purpose. And in a square meter, we have column, we have beam, we have slab. So let's understand the concept of one, rest will be easy for you. So I will explain you the slab. For the slab, what exactly we need? Soffit and the sides. And almost the same concept for the beam and column also. We need unit rate in square meter, fine? And in this sheet, I will talk about slab rate and material analysis, okay? But before we move further, we have to understand which material do we need. And also we need to understand the engineering. You can see the picture on the screen. The slab foam work is divided into a few things. One is vertical support, props. This is one. Second, we need horizontal strips. These strips are to support the plywood sheet that is on the top. So we have three things here, plywood sheet horizontal strips and vertical support. Try to narrow down, it will be easy for you. If we succeed to get the rate for one square meter, the same rate we can use for all other slab area. Okay, so we need to focus on one square meter, like how many vertical, like how many vertical props we need in one square meter, how many horizontal strips do we need in one square meter. If we get the rate for one square meter, rest will be easy for us okay i have prepared this sheet let's start with the top plywood sheet okay so plywood one square meter one by one it is costing me 282 you can check your country or region whatever the cost is there it's costing me almost 280 per square meter fine we have then now under this plywood sheet what is the next thing we need we need batten the horizontal strips so in one square meter how many do you need i need six pieces and each piece is one meter so if that's the case it's costing me 95.80 fine we have the horizontal support and we have the sheet as well if we sum both it is costing me 377 now we have to consider extra wastage so i'm considering 20 percent extra and the total cost is 75 wastage okay moving forward the after the sheet and baton we need the props vertical support to support both of them and for that purpose some people use uh, wooden i'm preferring here for a villa project the adjustable props it's easy more convenient so each prop is costing me 50 now i have to consider how many do i need in one square meter okay we have to stick to one square meter so in one square meter, I need five. Depending on the project and the structure, it may require four or six. I need five, okay? So this is the cost for five props in one square meter. Again, we have to consider 
accessories few tools few extra for that purpose i'm considering 30 percent extra so here i have the cost for props i have the accessories cost so these are the two things fine so we have all the material required not one of the important thing now whatever this material which we consider here it's not on rent we have purchased it same prop same material we can use it on the second floor also uh, we can done few repetitions fine so it means this cost is not for one time so what exactly i have done here the total material i have divided on three you can see here the total cost and this is the actual cost for per square meter the next is labor now how many labor do we need do we need a carpenter do we need a technician unskilled labor skilled labor we have to assume accordingly so i consider here one skilled labor uh, carpenter and two helper so this is the cost for skilled and unskilled as per ua okay sum of both is 170 now it's the cost for per day you know we have to stick to square meter that's how we have to enter in our boq so to convert this cost per day into square meter we have to assume how much work they can finish in one day so per day they can finish 60 square meter simply have divided so 2.83 is the cost per square meter fine i have considered the cost for fixing what about deshuttering because the same shuttering we have to remove and use for the other floor as well. So it means we have to consider the cost for deshuttering also. Deshuttering is easy. We don't need uh, skilled labor. Three unskilled labor are enough. And also they can finish more work per day. So I'm considering here 100 square meter per day. So this is the cost 1.50. Fine. Anyways, for fixing and for deshuttering, this is the cost for labor per square meter 4.33 after the material and labor the next one is machinery tools i don't need here any machinery but in some projects maybe heavy machinery or crane is required to support the foam work but in our project we don't really need any machinery but we need some percentage for labor tools so i'm considering here 10 percentage extra for labor tools so simply I'm considering extra for that and this is the cost 0.40 per square meter extra. Once we have the rate for material, labor and tools, I simply sum these three items. You can see here 263. After the sum we have to consider extra overhead profit for contractor. So since beginning if you're following this program QS program you have noticed I'm considering 20%. It could be between 15 to 20% based on your terms. I'm considering 20% overhead for contractor. And after adding the profit for contractor, this will be the cost 316 AD per square meter for foam wall. And the same rate it goes there. You can see here 316. So I have the square meter rate. Per square meter, once it multiply this, 37,000 gonna cost me for the slab form work. Okay, so I have given you the example about slab. Same way you can use for the column, same almost for the beam, because at the end in the column, what do you need? You need a plywood sheet, so square meter rate will apply. You need few props, you need few horizontal strips, so almost the cost will same. You can use it for square meter, fine. And when it comes to running meter, especially for the pad footing and for the staircase, so you don't need a square meter. It's easy if you follow the BOQ, it will be easy for you to understand. Here you need meter only. It means you don't need a soffit. It's a meter, so you just need the length. It's more easy for you. So I will keep these two for you to practice and do it by yourself. But I hope you understand the concept, square meter concept for slab, column and beam. Okay. And if you want to practice on the same sheet, I have kept the download link in the description. So download the sheet and practice by yourself. And most important, if you haven't watched the video about earthwork calculation, concrete calculation and the foam work, I will suggest you to watch these videos. It will give you the better understanding about this quantity swing program. So I hope you liked the video and learned something new. I tried my best to help you to understand the thought process. If you have any question or doubt, you know, feel free to drop it in a comment or contact me through LinkedIn. 
So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.